something that we do is if another agent is going to hold my open house, we make sure that they know what date and time and which house that they're uh, holding open. Kathy does this on Monday, puts it in their mailbox, and then that reminds them, oh yeah, I've got an open house this week. We also have the same rule that we have for floor time. If you're not going to be there for that open house, find somebody else to do it because I'm not going to. And so if they want to hold my house, mm -hmm. then that, that's the rule. Um, this is the open house list that Kathy created and she uses uh, when, she, when I walk through the office and I say, hey, Loving Boss is going to be on, on uh, open house this week. She takes the date from me and then it's what she does is she makes sure that uh, she turns in an ad to Chris. We do a paid for ad in the Sun and so she does that fast off to the Sun and then she makes sure that we put the open house in the Northwest MLS. So I don't even have to think about it. She just those things automatically. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen your super lockbox report, but this is what it looks like. And so she prints these out on Monday mornings, and then I take a quick glance at the list because I may have talked to some of these people, so I, I check off and write down what it is um, that they had to say about it. And then she makes the calls to the other agents and says, could we take a, a moment of your time? Could you give us some feedback? And then she reads the feedback tone, and I don't know where I'm going to see it better, but uh, the bottom, uh, husband liked it, wife didn't. Uh, there's the Countrywood Lanes listing, that long road, <laughs> and so we just write down the, the comments, and the reason we do that is if I can't get a hold of the seller right away, then later in the week they call me back, I'm able to go to the report and look up at what happened, so that's how we do that. This is the hits report that we print out from the John L. Scott uh, internet site, and it, here's where one of those little labels come into effect. Just what I've done is uh, we have a label, and you'll notice that everything that um, we do has my sweet little face on it. The reason for that is after 18 years of doing business, my face is my brand. And so we make sure that my face is on everything, and there's no question that I'm out there doing lots. And so uh, the little label says uh, further update. Agent hits on the Northwest in the last. You can go in and, and you can see um, all the uh, different hits. It's not like the old report, and somehow Kathy's figured it out. If you need help, call Kathy. She'll love that right now. Yeah. Um, key box showings, I also have that on there. How many times did an agent actually entered their home? And then I, uh, the last one is Zillow showings. How many hits on, on Zillow did they get? And then down here, I write a little handwritten note to them. I circle how many hits for this week and uh, sign each one individually. <coughs> the other system we have is for advertising checklists. And at any given time, if I'm talking to a seller and they say, yeah, you haven't advertised, and it's like, oh, yes, I have. And I advertised um, on, at the end of October and I advertised at the end of November. We have a system down here for saying where the ads turned up. So there's Kingston Community News. And so I'm able to give them feedback that, that yes, I absolutely did. We'll talk a minute about some selling agent systems. Um, we need to have uh, packets ready, use the clipboard for contingencies, file organization, and close that puppy. So we'll talk about some of these things. So again, um, is what we've done is made sure that we have packets together for writing an offer. So we had our listing packets, now we have our, our write an offer packet. And again, uh, the Kingston office, new agents were thinking we need something. And so our focus group uh, came together, created these forms, and made sure that a new agent can just go to the drawer uh, to, and pick up a copy of this and can just go through and check off the forms that they need. Um, so that's helpful to them. So we have that for, for residential houses, and then we also have one for land uh, on that. Notice that beat the highest offer and escalation clause. Let's get there again. <laughs> it's with a good market. And then if inside of each of these packets is a buyer's checklist uh, talking about, sorry about that. Uh, buyer's checklist that uh, we go down and make sure that all of these things are taken care of uh, as we're working with the buyer. And then the next one is a sheet also in there that has lender info, escrow, um, anything, any notes that we need to make. Um, this form I, I kind of put together with the last form, and so uh, there's just parts of this form that we use now. We talked about a contingency checklist and a contingency um, clipboard, and that's what this is. 
I mean, that's what we do on that, is we take who the seller is, who the buyer is, what the signed around date is, and then when each one of our contingencies is due, and then um, once that part of it's done, we put the X in it so that we know that, that that part of it's done. So by having the clipboard, each day I'm able to just look down and go, ooh, today is such and such, and we absolutely have to deal with that today, or, or look at it ahead of time and, and know that we're headed towards that date. So that's our contingency checklist. Um, in my office, everything is color-coded. Leah Henry taught me when I first went into the business that green means money. And so you want all your transactions to go in a green folder. Another thing that does is it reminds me to put that folder away each night. A green folder should never be left out on a desk or somebody else can be looking at your transactions. So I make sure that I look around my office as I'm sitting if there's a green folder out, it needs to be put away. Um, and so I have uh, packets prepared there. Um, when I was talking earlier about having the packets, um, if we are going to write an offer, again, green means money, and so on the, I'm going to write up a house, there's a little yellow dot on that. So color coordination goes hand in hand. So the little yellow dot says, hey, house packet, this one is for land with an orange dot on it. So that's how we color coordinate those. We also, again, the house listing packet, the land listing packet, and I found that to be very helpful. And then the packet that we turn into Chris at the front desk is red, uh, and that brings attention to it from, from her. So the next thing is, my drawers at work, and it's like, I'm going to take down my office, so what's my office to you? So you'll notice that um, I have the different sections in my drawer. When I start out with an offer it, and write it, and we're waiting to get signed around, it goes in this section here. Once it's signed around, it moves into the STI. Once the inspection is done, it goes into the in escrow file. And then I have my seller's files back there. Um, Solds are in a totally different drawer because it ends up by the end of the year filling the whole drawer, thank you God. And um, the section that you're not seeing up front here is future sellers and that's confidential, that's my secret, so you guys didn't get to see who, who all's names were on those files. <laughs> um, one thing that's really important is to build your file from the bottom up. So the first time you uh, write the offer and you've got buyer signatures, that's on the bottom and then it comes out with the seller and then the counter offers your title report and all that stuff starts coming in and it's what we found is that usually when you want something from a file it's the last thing you touched and so if you pile them that way then it's just easy to get in and out and then of course the number one rule is that if you take something out of it turn the pages mark your spot because it needs to go back into that same exact spot um, if you're ever in a lawsuit that file is really important to get everything in order uh, the way that you see it so that's that. Um, the next system that I have is talking about those dreaded little yellow sticky notes. And so uh, my first question is if you lost a phone number, a little piece of paper, lost the phone number, it's really an embarrassing moment. You empty out the trash can, you look on the bottom of your shoe because the sticky note may have fallen on the floor. <laughs> and so you're looking everywhere for that. So it's what I've done is I've developed a system. Um, it actually was part of the ACT, sign ACT software, and it was, um, you, you went in and it, it, you wrote stuff and you went to the next line, and so uh, the new package of ACT came out, and I don't use ACT, I was just using sign ACT, but the new package doesn't have it in it, so I, I didn't even buy the next uh, software because I use Outlook for everything. So um, having said that, the, cell, the system I developed is what I call my uh, voicemail offload form. And so it's what, what you want to do is try this, is that when you listen to a message the first time, and you, you, know, you got it, and, and you've written down the number, and, and you're you know, <coughs> going to do whatever you're going to do, but just hit the skip button to the next message. And in Kingston, that's just pushing the, the seven key. So listen to your voicemail. It'll tell you which button to be pushing. Hit the skip button. And then it's what I do is come back later and offload to my voicemail offload sheet. Your notes and numbers are in one place, yay, no more sticky notes. So what does that look like? 
It looks like this, which doesn't look very clear, but um, it has the name, the phone number, and the subject. And so I just go back through and I listen to the voicemails and delete and just put them in here. And then um, every time you hit an entry, you notice the last line doesn't, you just hit an entry and you get a new blank line. So it's a table that's in Microsoft Word is how you build this. And if you want me to email it to you, just say so. Um, every now and then you write down a stupid phone number and you don't put a name with it. Those <laughs> come over onto a sheet and then they'll be, later they'll go, oh yeah, I'm going to call someone so I'll see their phone number was one. Ah, there it is, right there. And so it helps with the madness of uh, trying to do too many things at once, like Frank was talking about. The next thing I want to talk about is a power hour. Recently I went to a class with Denise Loinus and she was talking about that she has a power hour every single morning. She said she gets up and um, she goes to her office and closes the door. There's no interruptions. She says no kids, no dogs, no significant other person. God help anybody who knocks on that door. Yeah, the house better be on fire, she said. So um, she said it's what she does is goes, goes in and spends one hour doing everything. And she says you work as if you're going out of town. Because we all work really hard when we're going out of town. We try to get everything done that we haven't done in the last six months. We try to get done the day before we leave to go out of town. So you want to work really hard during your power hour. And so the question is, you can't do an hour, then do a power 15. I started doing this, and it's remarkable. Power 15, you know, I, who has an hour? You know, can't even go there. But I do have power 15s, and I use this at home, or I use it at the office, and it's like, okay, for 15 minutes, I'm going to do this. And it's what I found is that the 15 lots of times turns into 30. Sometimes it turns into an hour. I was elated at home last week when it turned into three hours. <laughs> and so it's, sometimes it's just getting started. So if you commit to 15, you can keep going. So I love that system. Um, if you're going to be successful, you need to keep track of your money. Even Oprah makes sure that she signs every single check. And it's what I do is make sure that we che check every single paycheck, every single agent bill. We've actually uh, found billing errors on our agent bill. And I have to say, Kathy's excellent at this. She saved me a lot of money by making sure that um, my agent bills are correct and, correct and Bill's agent bill is correct. And so she's good at that. Pay stub errors, I've actually caught a couple over the years. You know, so it's just worth entering it in QuickBooks Pro, a bookkeeping system, and knowing where your money's going. It breaks it out into category. You see how much money you're spending on advertising. <laughs> You need to invest in your business, you need to believe in yourself, um, update your equipment, have a tax account, have a savings account, and you need to use them. Wrong clicker. <laughs> Technology, you need to try to keep up. This is my personal belief is that we don't have any excuse to not have a device that has instant email in this day and age. Um, we're the professionals, we need the tools, we need to be accessible and be able to respond back to our clients. They want instant replies uh, to their emails, etc. And sometimes it's just, um, you know, <laughs> text back or uh, Blackberry is, I'll be back to you when I'm back at the office. But at least they know you got the message and that you care enough to uh, respond back to it. Next thing I'm going to talk about is education. Um, I think education is really, really important. I feel like uh, to keep yourself educated and take as many classes as you can, you're the best view you can be for your clients. Um, I found that any class I go to, I find a nugget. There's one thing, if, they, if I don't care how much I pay for the class, if I can come home with one good thing and put it to use, it was worth my time and money. So I do do a lot of education hours. I have actually been audited twice by the, by the Department of Licensing. Um, it's random when they do it, and I've been audited twice. So it became my habit in the beginning is I keep all my certificates. I also do an Excel spreadsheet, and I can tell you what year I used, what class, for what license, etc. Again, you're a business, and so you need to treat it like a business. And so that makes an audit really easy. You just take your certificates out, photocopy them, send them back into the Department of Licensing. So that's how an audit works. 
talk for a second.